Governor, very good morning. Morning, Mike. How are you? Yeah, very well indeed. I don't know whether you recognise um, that sort of description of things that I just said there. One from, from the beach side, you know, there's no doubt that if they wanted to stop these boats taking off into the water, they could. If they wanted to stop them leaving French uh, waters, they could. They don't because they don't care, right? No, and it was interesting what you were saying about the double-decker bus turning up at uh, Dunkirk. I was listening to a French radio show yesterday, a shoe radio, which is very good. Uh, I suppose it really in tone and substance, the equivalent of, uh, of talk TV. Yeah. And there was a discussion there about the migrant problem, and someone said, everyone knows that there's a, a ferry system using lorries and buses from Paris to the Channel Coast. And this has been going on for many years. No one does anything about it. These are the big migrant camps in, in Paris. And um, no, absolutely, it, it, it's... And, and Mike, it's only March that Sunak and uh, Macron had their great bro, uh, bromance in Paris and they announced mm. a 480 uh, million pound deal to crack down on, on uh, illegal immigration. Yeah. Uh, clearly, that's not worked out very well. And one has to ask, where is this money going? And where has this money been going to for the last decade? Because this has been going on for 10 years. And also, who is responsible for kind of making an account of it? You know, because somebody somewhere in government here surely should be asking somebody somewhere in government there exactly what are you doing with the money? You know, can you show us what you're doing? Can you go us, you know, don't just give us a receipt saying, you know, receive, thanks very much indeed. What, you know, what have you done with it? Yeah, absolutely. It's like all this money that... Uh, West um, gives to African countries for, for aid and to, to help the people. And it always seems to go uh, elsewhere and to the, the people who aren't short of money already. So I think we're every reason to be cynical and sceptical. Right. And, uh, and just going back to, to what you were saying about Macron, I mean, it's interesting with uh, and, and Britain playing by the rules. You know, I wrote a piece yesterday from the spectator, Mike, about how Italy, um, or France rather, since 2018, has been pushing back migrants on the French-Italian border. And not only as recently as um, a fortnight ago, Medicine Sans Frontières, an NGO, highlighted this and said it's really, you know, what the, what the French police are doing is, is illegal. And yet no one says anything about it. And what Macron is a master of, and it's what Trudeau is a master of, is portraying themselves as thoroughly decent, progressive types. But in fact, you know, we, we see with what Macron has done with his own people, passing various laws and, and democratically. We saw what Trudeau did during COVID, um, cracking down on demonstrations. These are people who are, they, they have a, a strange relationship with democracy. Yes, they do. But equally, you know, they're very good at shutting things down when they want to. I was talking earlier to Alex Phillips about, you know, what happened during COVID. Do you remember when North Italy was the kind of epicentre in Europe for COVID outbreaks, but at the very beginning of it all? And, you know, everybody in uh, north, of, uh, north of Italy, whether it was Germany, whether it was Austria, they just shut the border and they went, nobody's coming in. Yeah. And so, you know, there was this mad dash from North Italy to get out if you were trying to get back into Germany or Switzerland, right? So they can actually stop the borders. They can put border checks in place. They could stop people coming from Italy and wandering across Europe and getting to France and then coming to Britain if they wanted to, but they just don't want to. No, they can't. And there's no point in, in newspapers yesterday, Sunak, it was a, an article about Richard Sunak struggling to get any deal with the EU about uh, um, you know, to, to tackle the migrant problem. Well, just give up, Mr Sunak, because they can't agree among themselves um, and they haven't been able to since this whole crisis began in 2011. So if they can't agree among themselves, the EU countries, they're not going to agree with Britain, who's still a pariah after we had the temerity to leave the EU in 2016. But very interestingly, Mike, and this hasn't been widely reported, but on Sunday, the Polish um, government announced that they will be having a referendum on the EU's um, immigration mm. policy. Because there's this EU policy whereby you, each EU country, the 27 member states, has to accept a certain number of, of migrants from the Middle East and from Africa. Yeah. And for everyone that is that they don't accept the countries, they're fined 20,000 euros. So Poland has come up with a novel idea of actually putting it to the democratic vote in a referendum. Do the Polish people want this? But this goes to the heart of the issue, Mike, that the, the, the European people don't constantly in surveys express a desire to have something done about illegal mass immigration yeah. and repeatedly 
the governments ignore them. And this is particularly true in France, where 75% of the people um, think that there's too much immigration. Macron just ignores them. Yeah. And as I said earlier, he stars himself as this great Democrat. Well, OK, then, Mr. Macron, put this to the vote. Allow the people a referendum on whether they want to stop mass immigration into Europe, into France. Poland's had the courage to do it, and I hope it forces every other country to do likewise. Yeah. Well, because we hear this phrase all the time, don't we, from the left, well, we have to do our share, we have to take our fair share of migrants. I don't think most people agree with that system at all. I don't think we believe that just because you want to have a better life, you can get one. You know, it would be nice in a perfect world to be able to offer people uh, a chance to start again uh, and to give them a free house and to give them a free car and to give them a free uh, uh, sort of amount of, of money so that they didn't have to work. But I'm afraid that's not the way that the economy works. It's not the way the country works. And it's incredibly unfair on people, not least those people who have come here legally from other countries, um, who are working their nuts off trying to make a living. Yeah, absolutely. We've got a cost of living crisis across Europe. Um, and you know, a lot of in France, for example, 14 million people are on the breadline. And you know, we, we, we need to look after our own first, while at the same time, as I said earlier, you know, we're, of course, giving aid to these countries, making sure that the aid goes to the right places. Because so what's happening at the moment, Mike, and I've written about this repeatedly, it costs 3,000 euros to come across the Mediterranean. OK, that's a lot of money. Yeah. The people coming across are predominantly middle class people. OK, we are stripping Africa of the best and the brightest. The, the, you know, the, I, I admire the people who are willing to make this journey, even though it's illegal. But... But we're depriving countries like Mali and Eritrea and Ethiopia of, of, their, of their best people. And we should be encouraging them to stay there, but at the same time, giving aid, making sure it goes to the right places to help these countries develop. We haven't been doing that. So who's moved in instead? China and Russia. Yeah. But although you might argue we have tried that and it hasn't worked because we've been giving money to some of these countries for a very long time. I and mean, India, for example, is now one of the biggest places where people come to this country from illegally, even though we have actually got safe routes for them to come on. Because many, many people come to this country from India to either work in the care sector uh, or to do student visas, right? But those who can't get those or for some reason have applied and didn't get one are now coming illegally. And we've given millions and millions of pounds to India yeah. over the years. Hasn't done any good. No, absolutely, absolutely. But the whole it just sums up that the shambolic nature, really, of a whole not just you know the, the immigration, the aid system, are really our our our, our foreign policy. But I'm talking about Europe in general here, and it's the same in you know if you look at at the um, you know, the, the majority of people coming across the Mediterranean are economic migrants. There's a lot coming from Egypt, for example, a really popular tourist destination. And this is why it's so important. As the likes of Georgia Maloney has been saying for a long time, the EU refused to listen to her. You need to have a processing centre set up in North Africa where people can be processed. And if they are genuinely fleeing war, persecution, let them in. Europe did a great job with, the, with Ukrainian refugees when Putin invaded. And, and they were genuine refugees. And notice, Mike, that the vast majority were, were not young men. The young men were staying in their country, face, fighting the invader. It was women and children mm. and old men. And, and yet, we, we just look, look at the photos that we see of the people arriving, either in Italy or in, in, uh, at the, in uh, Dover. The young men, they are overwhelmingly young, fit, healthy men. And, and it's just not right. And this is why the people, as you said so many times, Mike, the people are so annoyed, the Europeans, because they see the, the, the unfairness of it, that people are just playing the system. Mm. And what's the latest? The latest is that the Albanians have now, the Albanian mafia, who are at the heart of all this people trafficking, have now set up a new route from Spain to the UK and are quite happily advertising it on social media. And so we're just going to see another surge in Albanian migration yeah. and they're not there to work legally they're there to work in drugs prostitution organized crime and they're just coming in through open, mm. open border exactly and i mean it is something like um a sort of an underground sewer isn't it as soon as you push one manhole cover down they pop up somewhere else